Good morning, good morning. We are so excited and I have an opportunity to come together again, even virtually, because we know that the Holy Spirit is real and it doesn't matter if it's virtual or if it's in person, we have a great time in the Lord and that's what we're going to do this morning. So I want to welcome you. My name is Kelvin Kelly. I have the privilege of being one of the elders here at New Day Christian Fellowship and we are here this morning just to lift up the name of the Lord, to hear the word of God and be transformed and to uh, most of all know that we have and walk in victory. Amen. All right, so we're going to pray and get right into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for the technology that makes it possible for us to do this. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who can go anywhere, anytime, and change our lives and take us where we need to be. Thank you, Lord, that in spite of all that's going on out there in the world right now, Lord God, you are the answer. You are our victory. You are everything we need. So, Lord, right now, as we begin this service time, Father, as we begin this time, Lord God, of focusing in on you, I'm going to pray right now, Lord God, that wherever your people are and wherever they're hearing this this morning and watching this, that, Lord, there will be no distractions. 
emotions. Lord, there will be nothing, Lord God, that would cause them to miss one moment of what you have for them this morning, Lord. So, Father, we thank you right now for focus. We thank you right now that the Holy Spirit, Lord, is working in all hearts and minds. Lord, we come to get something rich and powerful from you this morning, Lord God, and we know you've come to deliver it. So, Father, we thank you right now for this time together, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, this is a day that you've made. We can rejoice and be glad in it. And now we're going to let everything that have breath, Father God, give you praise and worship. And we thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, New Day. I was just thinking and praying and... I want to surrender everything to God. Yes. The song says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. That means everything I have, everything I own, everything I do. But the emphasis this morning to me was all of my effort. I want to surrender all of my effort to you. You're awesome, God. Ah, let's worship him together. Come on. Bless the Lord. Sing. Lord, you love 
Sing that again. watching from home in your cars listening I just invite you to usher in the Holy Spirit wherever you are he's with you he's with us right now Lord we just want you to have your way God have your way in this place you're welcome you're welcome here Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just long to be with you. Every man, Every man 
just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. just want to be with you. Yeah. Yeah. We just want to be with you. We just want to be yeah. with you. Yeah. We just want to be with you. Yeah. We just want to be with you. Lord, what we're saying is that just in your presence is enough. All that we need is provided for in your presence, dear Lord God. In your presence is fullness of joy, fullness, all that we need, dear Lord God. And Father, that really speaks to how we recognize who you are. We cannot do this without you. We don't want to do it without you, Father God. Lord, we need you. You are the God that supplies, the God that nourishes. You are the God that protects. You are the God that provides. We just want to be with you. Father God, there is none other. There is none other, dear Lord. So we just come with humble hearts. But Father, with a boldness, only because we recognize that we are your children, Heavenly Father. And so we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, you love us so much that you gave us Jesus. And Jesus said he wouldn't leave us as orphans. He wouldn't leave us without comfort. So we receive the Holy Spirit. And we have your word. We have Jesus' intercession. So, Father, we thank you for caring so deeply for us. And, Father, we're grateful. We're so grateful, so thankful, dear Lord God. Father, when we look around, there's a lot to be concerned about. But when we also look around, there's a lot to be thankful for. So we just say thank you, Father God, for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider, for being El Shaddai, dear Lord God. The God that supplies. God that cares. You're the God of all comfort. That's who you are. And we just say thank you as we acknowledge you today. We give you glory. We give you honor because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we just want to be with you, dear Lord God. Thank you for receiving us, dear Lord God. Thank you for loving us, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God, for our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty and matchless name, that name above every name, that name that carries authority, and that name is freedom. And that name is protection. We thank you for that name. We thank you for that name. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Family, praise this mighty name. My name is Tony Dunn. I'm the senior pastor here at New Day Christian Fellowship. I'm also the bishop over the New Day Global Network of Churches. And I just want to say thank you for being with us this morning. I pray that your worship experience was tangible, that the very presence of God would just minister to you, you and your family. In Jesus' name. This is my wife, Jackie. Good morning, babe. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. It's so good to have you guys here and be a part of our service today. We just want to say thank you. My prayer, as always, is that you would just sit back and receive all that God has for you. Allow him to really minister to you during this particular time, this season that we're going through, not just as a nation, but globally, globally. Jackie and I oversee 19 churches throughout the world, and I've been in communication and contact with the pastors and the leaders, and this is a challenging time for everyone. But guess what? Be of good cheer, because our Lord and Savior has already overcome the world. So thank you. Thank you. I'm going to thank you ahead of time for getting plugged in, for staying disciplined, for not falling away, but being diligent about the things of God. Increasing your prayer time, your time in the word. Husbands, loving your wives like Christ loved the church. Children, being obedient to your parents. Doing those things you know that we as Christians are to do. 
Yes, it's a difficult season, but God has us. He does. Amen. 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 And to our first time guests, I want to say thank you. If you happen to be scrolling by or if someone invited you, welcome, welcome, welcome. In fact, welcome to New Day. I hear you too, Mama. You're right there. <laughs> yes, I am. Welcome, everyone. God bless each and every one of you. Yes, these are difficult times, but guess what? Turning back is not an option. Amen? <laughs> it is not an option. We were created to go through the storms and through the fires and through the rivers, through the valley of the shadow of death. You will go through. You will come out on the other side. Amen? Let's pray. Gracious God in heaven, we come before you. Thankful for this opportunity that you've given us to hear from you, O oh great God, because there is none like you. Thank you literally, Father, for a word in season that I may speak a word, Heavenly Father, to those that may be weary right now. And Father, I thank you that my teaching and preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but it is in demonstration and a manifestation of your spirit and of power. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today is uh, part two of No Turning Back, and the subtitle is Soldiers and Sailors. 
soldiers and sailors. We're in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 27 for this series. I'm going to ask that you take time and read the entire chapter multiple times in different translations. Prayerfully, we as a church, we're taking time to read this and understand this because my desire, my intention is that not one single one of you will be lost during this storm that we are experiencing across the globe. Amen. So today we're going to talk, we have some players, okay, in this particular passage. There's a ship that has 276 people on it. So this is not just a regular boat. This is a large ship that has 276 people on it. This is a big ship, okay? Now, some of the players uh, are the owner of the ship, okay? There's the owner of the ship. And then after the owner, there's also the captain of the ship, the guy that's the captain, okay? And, of course, you're going to meet the sailors. Who is going to sail the ship? Now, you also have this group of soldiers, and the soldiers have a captain. So you got the captain, the captain of the soldiers, amen? In addition to that, you got the soldiers themselves. And guess who the soldiers have? The prisoners, okay? One of those prisoners is the apostle Paul, amen? Now, often in the Bible, we, we overlook the no names, you know, just the people that aren't mentioned. But today, we're going to look at the soldiers and the sailors, and we're going to see just what was their experience of this difficult storm. Because even though they weren't in charge, okay, they were experiencing all the negativity, all the challenges, all the fear was manifesting in them. And for a lot of us right now, we're not in charge either, okay? We, in fact, we're not making any decisions. We have people above us that are making decisions that are, are impacting our lives. And so my desire is that, and that we, will, we will take this word today. And really, you know, my emphasis always with ministering or preaching and teaching, it, it, it's with a bent towards the practical application of the word of God to our day-to-day -day lives. I want to be victorious in all that I do. I don't just, I, it's just not enough for me to, for it to be a Bible study. I'm the type of person, I need direction, I need clarity, I need help, I need assistance, I need wisdom. Amen. So we're going to pick this up in verse, two, verse 9. Acts 27, verse 9, and this is the uh, great uh, physician Luke. He's the writer. He's the writer of the book of Luke, okay, the gospel of Luke, and he's also the writer of Acts. And Acts is really about the first 30 years in the life of the apostles after Jesus departed, okay? And so here's this great apostle Paul, and he's on this ship. He's on his way to Rome. That is his destiny. Spoiler alert. He gets to Rome. He arrives. And that's what I'm going to, I'm believing that's going to happen for each and every one of you. You will reach your divine destination, even though we're going through this storm right now. But, but, but the quad, thank you, thank you. But the quality of your life and how what happens once you get out of the storm is based on the decisions you make now. So let's look and see how people behave during this storm period. Amen. Verse 9, we had lost a lot of time. And I know for a lot of us right now, I touched on it last week, we, have, we feel like we've lost a lot of time. When I look at what I had planned for this year, because see, right now, today, okay, we would have been back home from Sao Paulo, Brazil, where pastors and their leaders from all over, it was a few hundred already scheduled to come to Sao Paulo, Brazil for our first international New Day Global Network Impact Conference. Pastors from Kenya, from the Philippines, from Zambia, from uh, Botswana, from South Africa, from, from all over were converging there. Yes, yes. Not happening. Not happening. I was supposed to have been in Kenya. Then I was supposed to have been in Zambia earlier. Just, just teaching in Bible colleges and doing crusades and conferences. Not happening. It didn't happen. And I'm looking and like, how are we maximizing our time here? And sometimes we feel like we lost a lot of time. But I'm going to tell you something. Time is something God created. It's his creation. And I'm trusting that he's managing it well. So therefore, I'm not going to get thrown off because of my perspective. It says here, we had lost a lot of time. The weather was becoming dangerous for sea travel because it was so late in the fall. And Paul, Paul, the prisoner, Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. So he goes to those that know about sailing, okay, and then he has an opinion. Now, here, here, here's the man of God, the apostle, who's going to talk to the sailors. Hmm. Let's see how that goes. Verse 10, men, he said, respectfully, men, I believe there is trouble ahead if we go on. Have you ever had someone come to you and give their opinion and you look at them like, what do you, how do you know what you're talking about? Who are you? I believe there is trouble ahead if we go on. And he describes it. He's, he says shipwreck. <laughs> and 
That's bad enough. Loss of cargo. This ship, now here, here's, here, here's something too. The ship itself, what it was designed for was to take cargo from place to place. It was in a shipping business. Just, just if right now, if, if modern day, think of like a FedEx, a Federal Express airplane or UPS airplane. You're up here in Ontario Airport, you see them landing all the time, okay? And it says loss of cargo and danger to our lives as well. Wow. Verse 11. But, what does but do? Cancel out everything before. <laughs> but the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and the owner than he did to Paul. Do not get your feelings hurt when people don't listen to you because they don't feel you're qualified or they don't feel you know what you're talking about. Now, here's the thing about the ship office. I mean, the ship owner. What was what was his motivation? He gets paid when he delivers cargo. So I'm, I'm, I'm look, look, I need to get paid. My wife's back at home. You know, she has some expectations. <laughs> she didn't share with me what her desires are. <laughs> no, I need to get this cargo over here to Rome. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Look, a uh, 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 religious man, you know, you and your gods and all that. I don't know who you're talking about. I'm a businessman. I got to take care of business. That's what a businessman does. And then the ship captain's like, you know, be quiet, Paul, be quiet. Because, you know, if you don't get the cargo, I don't get paid. And then, of course, the sailor's like, you know what, dude? <laughs> we gotta, I got to help this ship. I got to got this ship to Rome and get back. So I got to get paid also. And then, of course, you got the captain, you know, of the army. Now, his, his, his job is I got to get these prisoners to Rome also, including you, Paul. And the soldiers, you know, that, they're professional soldiers. They get paid, too, by doing what they were created, doing what they, they signed up to do. Verse 12, and since Fair Havens was an exposed harbor, a poor place to spend the winter, most of the crew wanted to go on to Phoenix, further up the coast of Crete, and spend the winter there. Phoenix was a good harbor with only a southwest and northwest exposure. Okay, so they, 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 they're looking at it from their experience and they're making a decision, right? I understand that. Verse 13, oh, here we go. Now the fun begins. When a light wind, say light wind. When a light wind began blowing from the south, the sailors thought they could make it. You make a, you, and this, we all do this. We make assessments about our future based on present circumstances. But how do you, how many of you guys know stuff can change? Watch this. It was a light wind began blowing from the south. The sailors thought that they could make it. They thought they, they could make it. So they pulled up anchor and sailed close to the shore of Crete. Verse 14. But, now what does but do? Cancel out everything. Watch this. But the weather changed, not just changed, changed abruptly. Abruptly, abruptly, and now, now a different kind of wind. Watch this, a wind of typhoon strength. And for you guys here in America, we say typhoon, yes, yeah, same as a hurricane, same as a hurricane. Other parts of the world, they, we say hurricane, they say typhoon, okay? This is no joke. I want you to think Hurricane Harvey. I want you to think Hurricane Ike. I want you to think all of them, I think, what's the new, latest one, Delta? And just all these, yeah, yeah, you know this. And you people in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean and, and the people in Louisiana and Texas and what, what rolls through there. You've seen the devastation. And the biggest one, the most devastating for, for us in, in uh, modern history was Katrina. I need you to think Hurricane. I need you to get a visual on what they're contending with, okay? But here's the thing. Number one, I want, you, I want you to understand this. Things can change suddenly. 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 The year. 19. I'm sorry, 2019. Okay, we're all excited. We're all excited. Had our, our New Year's Eve celebration. 2020. 2020. And in the back of my mind, I'm wondering, like, Lord, every, all my pastor friends have something related to vision. Why did you give me courage as a theme? And spoiler alert, 2021, theme is strength. You're going to need some strength. It's going to take some strength. Okay, back to modern day. Number one, things can change suddenly. 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 I need you guys to be aware of there. Where of that? And so, and, and so I've heard it preached, and, and I've celebrated and clapped and said amen when the preacher's up, and he talks about it, and suddenly there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind <laughs> filled the place, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The God of the suddenlies. He'll suddenly show up when you need him, suddenly show up right on time. You know, yeah, yeah, you're good suddenly. But sometimes bad stuff happens suddenly, too. It does. Now, Pastor, you're supposed to be encouraging us. I am. <laughs> telling you ahead of time get yourself together now verse 15 verse 15 the sailors say sailors 
They couldn't turn the ship into the wind. They couldn't. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They thought they could, but they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. This was what, this was their profession. And all of a sudden, all your skill and experience is not working. They couldn't turn the ship into the wind, so they gave up and let it run before the gale. It's like, you know what? No, no, no. Okay, cool. Look at 16, though. We sailed along the sheltered side of a small island named Carter, where, where with great difficulty, we hoisted abo aboard the lifeboat being towed behind us. So now you're making adjustments. And that's what we've been doing, too, during the storm. We're all making adjustments. We're all making shifts and changes, okay? 17. Then the sailors, the sailors, they bound ropes around, number one, watch this, the hull of the ship to strengthen it. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a nautical term that's called frapping, where, where you got a mass like this, where you got two pieces of wood coming together, and then they were tied. They, they begin to just to tie. You, you, we're going we're gonna to strengthen the ship. And if you notice, a lot of our lawmakers right now, they're trying to strengthen America. Got to hold America together. We got to hold this together. And I love the initial noble effort, but then people can get weary in well-doing. You can begin to lose focus, and this is why I'm saying you, you got to have courage, and we're going to need strength to ride this thing out. Then the sailors bound ropes around the hull of the ship to strengthen it. Hallelujah. Great step one. Watch this. They were afraid of being driven across the sandbars of Sardis uh, off the African coast, so they lowered the sea anchor to slow the ship uh, and, and were driven before the wind. So they're taking preventive measures, if you would. They're trying to hold the whole ship together. <laughs> Verse 18, the next day. So this continues. The next day. The next day. See, here's the thing I, I've noticed, and, and I, I mean this with all due respect and those that have suffered harm. But when, when like the hurricanes blow through, like um, it was a few weeks ago because we have a church, uh, Impact Ministries, uh, Pastor Jay and, and Crystal uh, Matthews, and, and we were praying with their members because in Beaumont, a hurricane was blowing through. And that's what the church did. It was, hurricane was blowing through, blowing through. And we're all praying and praying. And the next morning, a hurricane had blown through. Now, so a lot of us have to endure for a night, because <laughs> Joy's going to come in the morning. Well, wait, it's morning now, and they, they, the Joy's not there for them yet. This is an extended uh, situation here. The next day, as gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the whole ship where everybody is, the crew or the sailors, they began throwing the cargo overboard. Now, who, whose cargo was it? It wasn't theirs. Now, all of a sudden, they less interested in holding everything together. Now we're in a stage of self-preservation. Now, if you notice in America right now, a lot of people, <laughs> no, no, hold up. <laughs> we, we, we were okay, but this, that, now it's getting real. Okay, now it's getting hard. Now, now it's all about me and mine. Bless me and my four and no more. I need you to see this. Good intentions initially, but they got weary and well-doing. Trying to hold it together. No, 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 it's all about me. So your cargo, <laughs> it ain't going to make it. I sure hope the people who have the cargo have some insurance, Hallelujah. I don't know if they had insurance back then. But they began to throw the cargo overboard. This, the, the people are not here. And, and I don't know what we're going to tell them, but, you know, we need to lighten the load. This is too much for us to carry right now. Verse 19, the following day. Oh, it's still in it. You know, you're praying and hoping and whatever, and, and it's still there. The following day, they, the sailors again, watch this. They even took some of the ship's gear. And, and when you read this in Greek, that's their own stuff now. Now, notice, at first, they got rid of other people's stuff. I need you to see the progression of just with people, okay? They got rid of other people's stuff. Now, it's getting so bad. Now, I need to start lighting some of my stuff. Now, now, I'm rethinking my personal situation and what I'm doing. But before I got to myself, I was getting rid of somebody else's because I'm taking care of mine first. I'm keeping mine. If I got a choice between throwing yours overboard and throwing mine, I'm throwing yours. So the second thing I want you to walk away with today, you got to manage your expectations of people. you got to manage your expectations of people, especially during this time period. Because, see, you're going to let somebody offend you. Oh, I've learned to do something. You just pay attention to how people behave under pressure. Oh, they love Bishop Tony when everything is good. Let something start going a little awry. There's a, a unique, a small there's some people who have this mindset, and I'm going to pray for them, that when they're whole and well and blessed and prosperous and healthy, bishop! But when they start going through something, it's like they don't, they don't want to return your call. They, 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 and they, some people only like to be seen when everything is going good. They don't want to admit when they're going through something. I don't know why that's so hard. 
And, and, and I don't know why that, that, that choice is there, but I know that's just, I don't know, but I've learned something to manage my expectations. So for some people, when they're going through difficulties, it's a lot for them. I'm not going to get offended. I'm not going to get offended. The other thing, too, is keep this in mind about people. Your perspective of them is sometimes rooted in, in you, you believe that they're going to always have your best expectations. I mean, sorry, your best, best interests at hand. And sometimes we think, oh, they're going to have my back. They're gonna, no, they're going to have your back when everything's okay. When they're pressed against the wall, they, they might not be interested in you. You might not have the value in their life that you used to. You may not. So I know, because then you'll be like, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You need to believe it. Because the person you see when everything is great is not necessarily the person you're going to see when everything is going haywire in their life. It's not. And then you get thrown off your game because somebody offended you because they behave differently than you expected them to. So I'm telling you, you got to learn and manage expectations of people because they will shift under pressure. All of a sudden, you won't matter anymore. Your stuff won't matter anymore. You'll be on a ship and look over. Your stuff is in the water. It's like, I thought you had my back. I did when everything was great. I got limits. My love comes with conditions. I need my life and everything to be okay. I'm not going to love you all the way to the end. And some people are not. Spirit filled, tongue talking, laying hands, prophesying. Let, let all hell break loose. Some people are not there. That's why Paul said, don't get weary in well doing, because you can. And what will cause your weariness? What will cause it? Yeah. What will? You got, you got, so be mindful of people. Really, listen to them. But your source has to be from God above. That's how you're going to finish this. It can't be in the people. And I, I, you know, I read the word, and Jesus is always talking about dying to self and being a servant of all. And that's the attitude that helps us sustain to finish the race. Instead of trying to have, you know, have some people or, or, or bow down to people who are fickle, people who are not strong, people who think they're okay and, and never been through anything. That's one of the things I was concerned about with my son, Brian. You know, he came up, Brian, it's just like everything Brian looked at, it just turned to gold. Everything he touched, it was just wonderful. Brian was the first black drum major in the history of Ayala High School. And that was the year they went to the national championships in Indiana. Brian was the captain of the, the, the drum line. You know, and, and Brian was a newspaper editor at the school. Brian was, we, every year we had teachers calling us. They were, teachers would call the house and just say, we want to let you know how, how wonderful Brian is. And David and Lavelle used to look at him like, boy, we're going to punch you. But anyway. But I remember thinking like, you know, Brian really hasn't experienced anything. Now, Jack and I grew up in Compton. <laughs> Compton, that was a whole nother. And that wasn't Brian. He's a suburb guy. You've heard him talk. There's no hood in Brian. But one of the things we intentionally did was make sure we poured into him. And this storm that he has just gone through with his kidney, with lupus and kidneys. We got storms. And as his parents, you got to stand back and Judges chapter 3 says that some, God left some, some, some of the ites in the land to teach the generation that had never known warfare how to fight. And sometimes our kids got to have a fight. And sometimes parents, we want to rescue and we won't let them fight. And they won't be developed. Wasn't not in my notes, but let me keep going. Verse 20. The terrible storm raged for many days. See, when I was sitting in Hawaii, when we got news, okay, we was at a pat with some other pastors who we were sitting and like, okay, they, they're talking about shutting down stuff and shutting, we got to get back home, okay? And and it was it wrapped up the best conference. We had the literally the best conference ever in the history of conferences, and I've been to like a gazillion of them and not putting any of them down, but this was amazing. And oh, we were so focused and vision, and we're gonna do this, and they're like, wait, wait, what? Y'all been seeing the news? What they talking about? Back on the mainland, because I'm in Hawaii. On the mainland. You, on the mainland, he goes there a lot. On the mainland, this storm raged for many days. In March, I, I didn't think, you know, October, November, we would be in this situation. We're America. You know, we had, was it the bird flu? Okay, we, I think about 7,000 people died. Uh, we had the other one, whatever the one before this one. It's ours, and you know, you're hearing about it, hearing about it. <laughs> wait, wait, this is a little different. This is a bigger storm. It raged for many days. Watch this, blotting out the sun and the stars. Until, at last, all hope was gone. 
Let that not be your testimony. Let that not be your testimony. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, many days. And all hope is gone. You know what happens? In a little side note. And I learned this in a leadership class. Uh, Jack and I uh, took a leadership class at USC. And, and our professor was sharing with us that, that uh, prisoners of wars, you know, when they get captured. And so what happened is, you, you ever notice that some come home okay and some come home just jacked up? Okay. I'm not talking about somebody got blown up or something like that. I'm talking about captured. Okay. I'm talking about prisoners of wars. So got a prisoner. Okay. And um, now he's captured. Okay. And let's say like in Vietnam. He, he's held. Okay. And he says, okay, I know by, by Christmas they're going to rescue us. Christmas comes. It doesn't happen. He deals with New Year's. But he's thinking, surely Easter, Easter, because, you know, I'm going to be home for that big Easter feast. My family does. Easter, Easter's coming. I'm, I'm going to be okay. Easter doesn't happen. And then, then uh, for surely 4th of July, because that's American Independence Day. They're going to they're liberate us. Doesn't happen. Then Thanksgiving is coming back around. And he's reminiscing. Surely they're going to get us home for Thanksgiving to be with our families. And then Christmas rolls around again. New Year's, Easter again. And all of a sudden he begins to lose hope because he placed a time expectation on his deliverance. Got another prisoner. I don't know when it's going to happen. It can be Christmas, New Year's, Easter, whatever. I don't know when it's going to happen, but guess what? It's going to happen. And I'm good until it does. And so he manages his state. He manages his emotions until, as we said in the Baptist church, until my change comes. Until, until... It manifests until he gets delivered. And again, you, you have to learn to manage that. Now, verse 20 again, this terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. Do not lose your hope during this time. Verse 21, no one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew of the sailors together and said, men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. <laughs> Don't you just hate when somebody rub it in your face? <laughs> And tell you that you see him coming, you see him coming. One of the reasons my marriage has lasted as long as it has because I don't do that. I be thinking it, but I don't do it. <laughs> Keep it to myself, Jackie. You'll see. It. I would have said something, and it goes my way, and she'll look at me. And I, I in my mind, I'm like, Lord, I want to, but I'm not. I want. Oh, I want to, but I'm not. I don't want to, but I'm not. Because I got a choice. I, I can. I can be right. <laughs> or I can have a good marriage. <laughs> and a lot of y'all right, <laughs> and your marriage sucks. So sometimes you need, just need to keep stuff to yourself. All right? <laughs> you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. Now, here's the thing, too. I'm sure if you could have a do-over in 2019, there are some things you would not have done so that in 2020 it would have been better. But see, the kicker is somebody probably told you something in 2019, and you didn't listen. And maybe not just 2019, maybe just in your life period. Somebody said something and you didn't listen. You didn't listen. I, I, I know a wife uh, who, who was about to, you know, do something she shouldn't be doing. And one of her friends said, girl, don't do that. And the wife did it anyway. And years later, all hell breaks loose. Should have listened. Should have listened. I know a husband. Told, I, I got a better one. I, I remember family. Well, a person in a family, and, and, and they heard from God, and God said, don't do business with those people. Don't do business with them. But they got caught up in a hype because other people were doing business with these people. Got caught up in a hype, hype and a quarter million dollars later, it was it's gone. And I remember, I remember just, just and I, wouldn't, I, I remember hearing one day and, and heard a person say, God told me not to do that. Why don't we listen? Oh, God, I need your help. I need you to be here with me. Show me. Show me. Reveal yourself. Manifest yourself to me, Lord. You know, we do them heartfelt pray uh, prayers and cries to God. And somebody comes along and says, well, don't do that. And then you do it anyway. We do it anyway. Verse 22. But I love Paul. He says, but what does but do? <laughs> like Paul threw it out there. Then he's going to erase it. Okay. He put it out there, but he's going to erase it. But take courage. They need courage during the storms. We need courage during the storm, guys. We need courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down. And that's, that's hard to reconcile right there. You want to live, but I still want my stuff. We love our stuff. Don't mess with us in our stuff. 
In fact, Jesus talks about in the end times, somebody's going to be up on a house, see him coming. Wait, wait, let me go get my stuff. Go back in the house, get our stuff. Read the King James Version. We love our stuff. Something about our stuff. Stuff matters to us so much. Something a, a missionary, Pat Bailey, said one time, she said, and she's been, uh, oh, well, let's say at least, I don't know, I'll say 70, 80 countries, okay? And she said, you know what, Bishop Tony? I've never seen a storage unit in any other country other than in America. We love us. We, we pay for our storage units. The rent on our storage unit is, it costs more, is more than, than the value of the stuff in the storage. It's funny. Love our stuff. It says here, but take courage. None of, you, none of you will lose your lives, even though the ship is going to go down. Now, number three, third thing I want you to walk away with today is God is merciful. He's merciful. He's merciful. And mercy is something you get when you don't deserve it. it he's going to stop something from happening to you. That's what mercy is, because, you know, oh, I messed up. I jacked up. Yep, I'm guilty. I did it. I did it. But can you get can, I, I, um, What do we say when we're in court? Have mercy. Have mercy on me, judge. Let the court have mercy on me, because, yeah, I'm guilty. <laughs> yeah, I ran that red light. Yeah, I did that. Yes, I did that. Have mercy on me. I was in Palm Springs once, and a police officer pulled me over, and I was, oh, I had my 5.0 Mustang T-Tops. I was rolling on the way to Houston. And I forgot what he clocked me at, but it, it, was, it probably was triple digits. God bless me. I was only 21. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> um, and I, but, but I remember when, because I had to go back to court. And you just couldn't pay the ticket. And I had to drive back to Palm Springs you know, about a month or two later. And I asked the judge, can, can you just work with me, please? He said, I sure will. The former speed limit was 80 or something. I'm going to give you that. And he, he gave it reduced. So that was a level of mercy. But I still had to pay the fine. So sometimes you'll keep your life, but the ship's going to go down. So let me tell you something, too. When you, just one other thing, and you know you messed up, humble yourself and admit it, please. Have a repentant heart. I mean, a repentant heart. Sorry. Sorry. And Jackie come to me, well, Tony, you did such and such. I felt this. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. But that's, that's not, that's not going to get it. It's not going to get it. Let's go on. Verse 23. Paul is talking. He said, for last night, an angel of the, of the God whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. <laughs> I, ooh, see this for a minute. For last night, an angel of the God whom I belong, watch this, and whom I serve stood beside me. This is important. Verse 24. And he said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. You're going to get to your divine destiny. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone selling with you. Please see this. See, you know what I try to do? I try to hang around the anointing. Now, see, some of y'all got friends and people like you follow. Oh, oh, there's one. Social media. Let's look at that for a second. Then I have my notes. But how about this? Social media. Who are you following? Are they popular or are they anointed? Grant a safety to everyone selling with you. Who are you selling with? Are they going to be safe? See, you know, Bishop Ed, Pastor Ed used to talk about the slop over blessing. Slop over, slop over. I mean, it's like there's so much happening with him that something's spilling over. So you just want to kind of cuzzle up the next somebody that has a little bit coming over so some will just fall on you. That's it. I'm, I'm going to stay around anointed people. I need people that know God. I need people like Elder Kelvin at prayer before we started service, before we even started service. That kind of, see, that's an anointed man. Why, why is he your friend? Oh, Bishop, you using him? Call it what you want. That's what anointing is. I'm staying there. The Bible says here, everybody that was traveling with Paul was granted safety. I'm going to tell you about proximity. Proximity, ma oh, it matters. Who are you sliding up next to? Who are you? I'm staying with anointed people. I need people that know how to pray, people that hear from God, people that worship, people that people. I remember um, uh, Tanya, I forgot your life group leader back at Zoe. Tanya, I forgot her name. But one day I met Zoe and it, 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 you know, the hallways and we're walking and I'm listening to Tanya by herself, lifting her hand, praying in the spirit, worshiping God. Nobody's looking. I'm like, that's a woman who's after God's own heart. That's the kind of, and I'm glad my wife is in her life group. I need people that know God like that. God has granted safety to everyone selling with you. 
I do my best to stay before God so that every one of you that's selling with Tony Dunn, that he will grant safety to you. 25. So take courage. If I believe God, it will be just as he said. But we will be shipwrecked on an island. <laughs> so last week I said, you know, I, I think trouble's ahead. It might get worse. It might get worse. Ooh, that's a negative confession. <laughs> Whatever. He's going to be shipwrecked. Is that negative? Next week we're going to talk about shipwrecks. 27. About midnight. Midnight. When? Midnight. And at midnight, suddenly, there was an earthquake. Okay. Suddenly there's something. About midnight. Watch this. On the 14th night of the storm. That's a long time to be in a hurricane, Pastor Todd. That's a long time, man. 14. You're out there on 14 days. Jackie gets seasick. Baby, you would have been jacked up. 14 days in a hurricane. Good Lord. 14 days. Man. About midnight, 27, about midnight on the 14th night of the storm, as we were being driven across the Sea of Adria, the sailors since land was near. They dropped a weighted line and found that the water was 120 feet deep. Watch this. But a little later, they measured again and found it was only 90 feet deep. That's good. That's good news. Okay. Watch this. At this rate, they were afraid. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Why are you afraid? Watch this. We will soon be driven against the rocks along the shore. So they threw out the four anchors from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. 30. Then the sailors, sailors again, watch this, tried to abandon the ship. Hold on. Paul said, you know, everybody's with me, going to be all right. And sometimes he, when you will take your eyes off the man of God, look at the circumstances, please, people. God. I understand fear. Fear make you do some crazy stuff. Then the sailors tried to abandon the ship. They lowered the lifeboat as though they were going to put out the anchors from the front of the ship. Now watch this. <laughs> I told you, people will default to take care of themselves. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 30. Then the sailors tried. I said that. Verse 31. But Paul said to the commanding officers and to the soldiers, you will all die unless the sailors stay aboard. Got to give you a destiny. A safe passage, you'll make a dumb decision under pressure and jack everything up. I need you to think. Think before you make a crazy move right now. Because see, you're coming to 2021 worse than ever in your life because you didn't listen. Because you thought you knew what was best. Because you got afraid. And you're going to go in an overboat. I mean, get in a lifeboat. You're going you're gonna to do your own thing. You're going to go do your own thing. You, 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 I've seen people do it. Get in a lifeboat. I've seen people do it. Trey, I've seen them do it. They get in a lifeboat. I've seen them. So let's, I watch people time and time again. They're going to, they think they got it figured out. But Paul said to the commanding officer and the soldiers, you will all die unless the sailors stay aboard. And I love verse 32. So the soldiers like, you know what? It ain't happening. They cut the ropes to the lifeboat, let it drift away. Y'all ain't going. Fourth thing I want you to walk away with today. We need one another. We need one another. See, you think, you think, you think, you think, we need one another. I need y'all to see this. We got two groups. We got soldiers and sailors. I need you to hear me. Listen, two groups, soldiers and sailors, soldiers and soldiers and sailors. I'm going to slow down. Soldiers and sailors. Which group are you in? Kind of doesn't matter. We need one another. You got your opinion, you got your perspective, you got your feelings, you got your thoughts. You interpret the word this way, they interpret the word that way. But guess what? We need one another. Now's not the time to be abandoning ship. <laughs> Funny, the soldiers now, they listening to Paul. <laughs> now listen to me, please. We need one another. We need one another. God has brought us together for something bigger, which is on the other side of the storm, on the other side of COVID-19. And I'm talking specific, specifically now to New Day family. Don't abandon the ship now. Now, whether you are a soldier or a sailor, it doesn't matter. We need one another. Turning back is not an option. We are called to go through. We're going to get to the other side. 
In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Bow your heads, please. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is alive, it's a living thing, and won't return unto you void, Father. And I thank you that your word will go forth today and minister to the people. So whether, they're, whether they are soldiers or sailors, dear Lord God, whichever they are, Heavenly Father, they will make a decision to stay with the ship, Heavenly Father, to work well together, Heavenly Father. And Lord, as the captain of this ship, I pray for a special anointing upon myself and my wife and the elders and ministers and pastors of New Day, Father God, that we are spirit-led and all that we do, every decision is not based on personal preference, not based on social pressure, not even based on government mandates, but it's based on us hearing clearly from you. Father, my desire is that we all reach Rome, and Rome is our divine destination, dear Lord God, the place that you have designed for us to be. And I trust you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. For you all that don't know Jesus Christ, you don't know him. You maybe know about him, but you don't know him. I want to give you this opportunity. I'm talking about a storm of life right now. But you know what? All of this life is going to go away one day, and that will only be eternal life. And where you spend eternity is based on the decisions you make today. That's the reason Jesus came, because God wanted man to be in right relationship with him, right standing with him. And in order for that to happen, a sin had to be, I'm sorry, a price had to be paid for our sin. Because we've all sinned and fallen short of God's glory, every single one of us. I'm sure you're a great, awesome, and amazing person. But you've made some mistakes, and those mistakes have to be accounted for, and that's why Jesus came. If that was something you could do on your own, that would be no reason for him to have come. Not only did he come, he died, and he rose again. So our sins have been forgiven, and he has the power over death and the grave. And once we receive Jesus as our Savior, as our Lord, we now have eternal life. And the Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. So if that's you right now, I want to give you this opportunity. I want to lead you in a prayer. Simply follow along with me. Say, Dear God, I come before you recognizing I need Jesus. I believe he died and he rose again on my behalf. I receive him now as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Father, for welcoming me into the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And also, too, maybe there's someone here and you have, uh, maybe you've jumped overboard and now you want to get back on the ship, meaning that maybe you need to rededicate and recommit yourself to Christ. And I love that because God allows that. So if you need that, please let us know. And also, too, if you don't have a church home, you would like to be part of our fellowship. We're meeting online right now, but please, please, please feel free to get a hold of us. Amen. God bless all of you. God bless you. If you are ready to take the next step in changing your mindset, or if you answered yes to any of those invitations, please text New Day Connect to 94000, and one of our ministers will reach out to you. We look forward to hearing from you. Well, it's time for us to continue in our worship of the Lord. We know we want to be very mindful not to separate the time to give from the rest of the service. It's all part of what we're here for, which is to worship our Lord and Savior. And so now is the time that we have this opportunity to give. This scripture in 2 Corinthians 9 is an amazing scripture because it tells us about, it talks about giving, but it tells us where we're going to receive what we need in order to be able to give from. And the amazing thing is, the very same source that we're giving to is the source that supplies what we're giving. That's an amazing deal. You're going to give something to me, but I'm going to give it to you first to give back to me. Only God would offer a deal like that. Look at this. It says, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. And I'm going to stop right there. He supplies the seed to the sower and will also supply and increase the store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. He gives us what we need, and then as we do what we're supposed to do with it, 
he then increases and gives us more of it. And reading on, it just gets even more, <laughs> more incredible. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. Why are we being blessed? Why is he increasing us? So we can be generous on every occasion. And through us, through our generosity, will result in thanksgiving. Not to us, but thanksgiving to God. So if this were a store and this was a sale, it'd be one of those BOGOs, buy one, get one. You give and people get blessed and then they turn around and, and thank God and worship him and, and call attention to who we're actually trying to actually worship and bring the attention to. So it's just an amazing thing. So our giving brings glory to God. And in this day and time that we're in right now, people need to be helped and they need to be pointed to the Lord. And that's what our giving does. So now we should be ready to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. And so we're going to do that right now. We're going to tell you that it's easy to do it, too. And you can do this through technology so wonderfully. You can text to give. Text New Day Corona to 77977. You can give online just by simply going to our newday.org website, newdaycorona.org, and then click give. Or, of course, you can do it by mail, by mailing your tithes and offerings to 114 West Ontario Avenue, Corona, California. Okay. Now, we just read that God gives seed to the sower. So how does he do that? In a lot of different ways. And that's what our offering confession is about. It points out all the many ways that the Lord can provide seed to those of us who are sowing. So we want to say this offering confession together. Father, we honor you as we present to you your tithes and our offerings. You are the authority over all we have. We give an obedience to you, O oh God, who causes all grace to abound towards us. For we have sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. There is no lack in our lives, for we give to the poor and support the work of missionaries. Therefore, as we sow our financial seed, we thank you for the harvest of wisdom to manage our financial affairs, financial favor, oil and mineral rights, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, favorable settlements and rebates, the return of what's lost or stolen, scholarships and grants, increased sales and commissions, the miracle of debt cancellation, favorable financial surprises, every bill and every debt paid. We declare that we not only have enough, but we have more than enough. We declare that we have enough to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the whole earth. For we are blessed to be a blessing, and we will care for the widows and orphans. In Jesus' name, we will do this. And everybody said, amen. Here we go. Give, give what you have. The Lord, Lord will give you more. Give what you have. Da 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 
So again, after that powerful word, we should be ready now to go forward. Yes, the trouble is out there. No, things have not changed since you came and listened to this word, but what has changed should be your perspective. We know now there is no shrinking back. We know we don't lose hope. We know that the Lord's going to get us through it. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this powerful, wonderful time together. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing on those words that Bishop Tony has delivered to us this morning. Let them, Lord God, be rhema. Lord, let us be doers of that word, Lord, so that we can have victories in our lives and you can have the glory you deserve. We thank you now for this time, Lord God, and we go forward now victorious and as more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He just wants our hearts. That's all he 